All right, so prices have picked up a bit this week. Bitcoin currently sits at 58.1K, but uh, the story is actually altcoins and seeing them really start to rebound after uh, quite a few weeks, if not months of uh, pretty poor returns. So I'm starting to see a little bit of a rise in altcoin season mentions, stuff like that. But what we're going to do really quick is just take a look at the overall sentiment and a few other uh, semi on chain type of metrics for Bitcoin to get an idea of whether we are going to see a quick local top. Uh, we posted earlier today, if you checked out our X or our insights.sentiment.net feed, um, the positive versus negative sentiment ratio right now. So this is just taking into account all of the comments that are going on and dividing anything that our algorithm picks up as positive versus anything that our algo picks up as negative. Right now, we're starting to grow a little bit. We haven't really seen this point much at all. This is the sixth largest spike over the past year right now. And it's not a perfect science, but you can see most of the time when we get super positive, it's a pretty quick retrace. Uh, this one was a little bit delayed. This one retraced right away. This one retraced right away. And then this one was kind of an anomaly and it flattened out before going further up. Uh, but do notice that as we started to flatten out, sentiment went way down. So that was part of the reason that we were able to keep rising there. But for the most part, you can see moments where, you know, big spike and then it kind of goes very negative before we continue up. Big spike and then look at that, very negative right at the end of that red bar and we start to rebound. So now the question is, are we going to continue to see positive sentiment if Bitcoin hits 60K and crawls, you know, toward even 65K. I would imagine people get pretty euphoric at that point. But for now, this is just kind of a warning flag. And not everything on this video is going to be doom and gloom. We have some good news too. And uh, I'll get to that next. So from the perspective of Bitcoin's correlation to the S&P 500, we can see that the S&P has been thriving, right? We had this big drop that occurred during the presidential debate on September 11th. And then the CPI report came out and completely flipped everything on its head. And we see equities rise and especially gold and silver, which isn't pictured here. Gold really went up big and silver went up even more. Uh, I think they the precious metal jumped almost 5%. Gold was more like 3% as of today, September 12th, Thursday. Uh, Bitcoin, on the other hand, you can see kind of just doing its thing in this narrow range between 57.5K to 58.5K. So the argument is, well, if Bitcoin is still correlated to the S&P 500, then we might have some profit redistribution from equities and maybe even some of those gold bugs out there putting money into Bitcoin with their profits. We'll wait and see. Um, the other argument would be, you know, if crypto is leading, which some people argue that it's kind of acting as a high levered tech stock these days, then the S&P might come back down because Bitcoin is not uh, picking up enough steam at the moment. So it can go either way. Uh, that's why we don't analyze just based on one metric. But yeah, the correlation is still there. I mean, if we zoom out to the past year here, there are plenty of times when there's minor divergences like here in July, but for the most part, you can see they're going up together. They're even kind of dipping a little and then rising a bit together. Here's the divergence. And then they both dip again, rise again. And then uh, Bitcoin arguably dropped a lot more than the S&P 500 based on their own kind of uh, deltas that they range in. Gold, meanwhile, is just on its own path, uh, making a new all-time high today and uh, having a pretty historic run itself. Um, so for those who think that some of the correlation between gold and crypto may come back with Bitcoin often being referenced as digital gold for much of the past decade, there's that argument as well. So correlation wise, I think there could be an argument for crypto to make up a bit of ground with uh, stocks and gold and silver really taking off right now. Uh, that's, of course, just speculation. And we have a lot of other uh, metrics here that we can look at. This one's probably my favorite thing. This is the mentions of 
round numbers between 50 to 55K, 60 to 65K, and 70 to 75K. Obviously, we are just below 60K right now. So it's very applicable to see how many people are calling for 60K at the moment, uh, it, despite us not seeing that level since really going back to the end of August, a couple weeks ago. So 50K to 55K, we're obviously past that price once again. Look at how well prices typically bounce off of those numbers whenever people start to mention them frequently, though. Huge 50 to 55K mention here, instant spike. Here as well, instant spike. Here as well, instant spike. And here, instant spike. Literally one of the most perfect signals that I've seen in, in terms of bottoms while Bitcoin is sitting in the low 50Ks when people start to talk about it a lot or it's approaching the low 50Ks almost every time we see a bounce. For 60 to 65K, you can see how it was declining for a while, obviously, but if we just kind of look between these two here, 60 to 65K is picking up a tiny bit of steam uh, with 50 to 55K going down. This is, of course, on a shared axis. You can see it a little more clearly if I do this. You get the idea. I, I think there's a little bit of a rise, but really not as much speculation as you would think. Um, if we really get to that 59K level in the next 24 hours or even surpass it, of course, we would start to see a lot of mentions of 60 to 65K. But the best alpha is when we're kind of approaching it. Does the crowd start to get super euphoric or do they kind of start to get pessimistic and just ignore it because they don't think it's going to happen? And then lastly, we have 70 to 75K. This would be that all-time high region. Um, and we're not really there yet. Uh, of course, the all-time high was at 73.7K. And um, outside of the euphoria here, as people were hoping we would see a new all-time high, there's been a pretty dramatic decline in mentions of these numbers over time, as, of course, prices declined and made it feel less and less realistic for traders. So I think that's really cool. You can even look at this stuff by platform if you're really interested in getting granular. Um, I, I think Reddit and Twitter slash X are probably the two uh, best signals just due to their sheer volume and the amount of people talking about prices on a day-to-day -day basis. But the overall look is a, a wonderful uh, thing. And the link is in the bio if you want to just check it out, bookmark it. And, and see how this is looking on a daily or weekly basis. Next up, funding rate. So this is still a very good sign that we haven't uh, gotten to that top yet and we may have further to climb. Binance funding rates for Bitcoin, consistently short, albeit it's starting to get a little more close to even now, but you can see pretty consistently since the seventh, let me just hide BitMEX for a minute. So this is just Binance. You can see it's starting to creep up close to neutral again. This is when people were longing, uh, hoping that we would get a quick rebound. And of course, they got liquidated. Basically, whenever there's an extreme, liquidations are at play and uh, basically push prices the opposite direction in most cases. So right now, yeah, lots of shorting and look at all this rising that's been going on. But they're not all liquidated yet. There's still a bias towards shorting on Binance. And the same goes for BitMEX here, which a little more recently started getting some big short spikes once again, the same as we saw on September 7th, which was right about the time where we saw a local bottom here and then started to skyrocket for, I shouldn't say skyrocket, but certainly climbed pretty to a pretty healthy degree, about 7.5% during that time. So now that we're seeing big shorts on BitMEX as well as Binance at the same time, the argument is those shorts have not been liquidated yet. Therefore, the prospect of a rise, potentially rebound past 60 or even get close to 65K, uh, is very much at play until people stubbornly start to get, uh, get rid of their shorts and become a little more optimistic again. Of course, you know, the opposite is showing here with a lot of positive sentiment clearly uh, being talked about right now. 
But in terms of where people are putting their money where their mouth is, it's almost the exact opposite. The people that are opening margined and leveraged, uh, you know, open, open interest positions, shorting seems to be the trend at the moment, despite the rise here that's been going on. All right, and I just wanted to quickly look at regular weighted sentiment. This is, of course, combining the positive versus negative sentiment and then also multiplying in just the overall level of discussion. So it, it doesn't look quite as bad because the social volume has been declining all along, basically since the all-time high, there's been less and less discussion toward Bitcoin and crypto in general. So despite the positive bias that's going on here, due to the discussion rate, which I can, I can add on here, social volume, you can see quite clearly big decline since the all-time high levels, a little bit of a jump here in early August, but it's been declining ever since. That's why you're not seeing the same uh, euphoric signal like we were back here when there was at least a little more discussion in late July. And then last but not least, I like to check out the total amount of holders. These are just the overall amount of non-empty uh, Bitcoin wallets. They could have, you know, one one millionth of a Satoshi, and that still counts as a non-empty wallet. But for the most part, um, we want to be seeing these numbers declining because that means less novice and real retail traders are staying in crypto because they're giving up, right? And when they're giving up like this, that's often when you see this big bounce that occurs. And we've seen this in so many moments in history over the last five to 10 years. Uh, while there's declining non-empty wallets, it means that there's very little resistance for uh, whales to pump prices as they please. And they're scooping up all of the shedded coins that are going on here from the small addresses. So as of now, We've seen a pretty consistent increase just about from the bottom about a month ago. We've seen about 510.5K uh, new wallets in terms of net uh, new wallets with coins in them. So not ideal. We'd prefer to see it at least kind of flatten out out of fear like we saw here or even decrease. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean prices can't rise. It just means it would be rising while there's a bit of FOMO going on. As we can see clearly here, there's very much a positive bias starting to take shape on social media. So keep that in mind. I see kind of a mix right now. Um, I would only start to get worried of a top really once we start to see these funding rates go away and we start to see traders going long again. But I still think we have room to run if we see the S&P 500 stay stable, because I do believe that crypto is kind of relying on the stock market, especially the S&P 500, to uh, continue ascending or at least not crashing, right? Um, and until that correlation goes away, there's going to be some dependency there that we have to worry about. Hope this was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Talk to you guys soon.